The Sony RX100 has been around for almost six years, and apart from small to medium updates and improvements from revision to revision, it's remained largely unchanged. There are countless in-depth reviews on the RX100 Mark V out there already, so I'm not going to bore you by going over all the specs in detail. With more modern offerings being released by Sony's competitors, namely Canon and Panasonic, the RX100 series is one of the more dated and still most expensive option in its category. And with the new RX100 Mark VI being announced, the question is, is it still worth buying the Mark V or should you look at other alternatives? When the original RX100 came out in 2012, it was almost in a class of its own. There weren't any other companies offering such a compact camera with a one inch sensor and image quality that rivaled that of the leading micro four thirds cameras at the time. Now it has some tough competition with Canon's G7X Mark II and Panasonic's LX10 and each of those cameras provides advantages and disadvantages over the Sony. So how does the RX100 Mark V stack up? The body is pretty solid but it doesn't quite have the build quality of the G7X Mark II. It squeaks and creaks a little bit when you squeeze it or press some of the buttons and the finish is smooth and slippery with no finger grips. Sony sells a rubberized grip as a $20 add-on, which I think is an essential purchase, but after five iterations of this camera, it kind of sucks that they still haven't put this on the camera body as standard, or at least included one in the box. External controls are a bit more limited than you might find on a DSLR and most mirrorless cameras, with a single dial wheel on the back that I set to control aperture and shutter speed, and a notch-free control ring around the lens, mine is set for ISO. There's a built-in pop-up flash and it can be bounced, which is usually the only way I ever use pop-up flashes. The screen flips up 180 degrees for selfies and vlogging, but it's not a touchscreen. And contrary to the majority opinion, I love that it isn't touchscreen. My previous camera, the EOS M3, had a touchscreen and I was always consciously trying not to touch it for fear of unwittingly changing the settings. Plus, with a non-touchscreen, you can wipe away the finger marks without messing anything up. What put me off the RX100 Mark V initially was the menu. Everyone complains about the unintuitive menu design and I have to agree, I wish Sony would give it a major overhaul. But once you get everything set up the way you want it, it gets easier after a few weeks and it only takes about 17 years to start making sense of it. The video quality is truly excellent, but it's the vast wealth of professional features and customization that sets this camera apart from its competitors. Frame rates of 24, 30, 60, and even 120 can all be used with full manual control of all settings, and there are lots of customizable picture profiles for professional grading. It's amazing how much control this camera gives the user for video work, which is why I bought it. If 120 frames per second isn't enough, there's a mode that makes this camera a total outlier in its class. A mode so special it gets its own place on the mode dial. HFR, or high frame rate, lets you record at 240, 480 and 960 frames per second. And it's not just a gimmick. While the 960 frames per second mode is pretty grainy, the lower frame rates are certainly usable, and even the 960 can be used to get some interesting effects if you can live with the softer look. The pop-up viewfinder is useful in bright sunlight. I rarely use it, but on those rare occasional days when it's so bright I just can't see the main display, I'm glad to have it. The lens is a fast f1.8 to f2.8, 24 to 70 millimeter that gives 2.9 times optical zoom. It's better than no zoom, but I find the range to often leave me wanting more. If only it was 24 to 100, it would be a bit more useful. 
The new RX100 Mark VI comes with a 24 to 200 millimeter lens, which is a massive step up in zoom, but it comes at the cost of being slower at the widest end at only f2.8 versus f1.8 on the RX100 Mark V. As a stills camera, the RX100 Mark V isn't going to give your 5D Mark IV a run for its money in terms of image quality, but for a compact camera it's at the top of its class. And it's fast, really fast. That goes for autofocus too, it's just ridiculously fast. The one inch sensor might seem large for a compact camera if your previous camera is more than a few years old, but compared to APS-C or full frame sensors it's tiny. And still, the RX100 Mark V manages to capture sharp, detailed, beautiful 20 megapixel images despite its smaller sensor. For me though, it's all about the video. I've had more expensive cameras with much larger sensors and none of them could give me the video features that the RX100 Mark V can. When I watch back some of the clips, I'm still amazed that they came out of this tiny, pocket-sized black box. So after all is said and done, is the RX100 Mark V still worth buying in 2018? For me, the answer is absolutely yes. To have this many features and this much quality in such a portable package, well it's kind of a dream come true. Does it match the quality of a full frame DSLR? No. But it's a camera I always have with me wherever I go, and that means when something magical happens in the environment around me, I have a way to capture it while my DSLR is perched on a shelf at home. The new RX100 Mark VI, in my eyes, is a fairly minor upgrade with the emphasis being on the 200mm zoom lens, but with a maximum aperture of only f2.8 and a price tag several hundred dollars more than the Mark V, it's just not worth it to me. If you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments if you think I should upgrade or if you think Canon or Panasonic have something better in the pipeline. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm Rue and that's my view on the RX100 Mark V.